So let's do some PCR based cloning today. Uh, we have two plasmids, uh, plasmid TDL11 uh, and PUC19. And all we want to do is uh, PCR amplify gene Y from TDL11 and clone it in PUC19 using a restriction enzyme sites EcoR1 and BAMH1. So we'll PCR amplify gene Y. Uh, for that, we'll design forward primer with a tail containing eco r1 site and a reverse primer with the tail containing bam h1 site if you do pcr uh, uh, amplification using such primers uh, we'll eventually get a product containing gene y in the middle with the flanking region containing eco r1 and bam h1 sites which we can cleave uh, subsequently and use those staggered ends to clone in puc19 plasmid so let me open plasmid TDL11 here and here's the text pane. I'll go and click at the graphics map. Um, the default setting uh, here comes with uh, a graphics map which shows up all the unique restriction enzyme sites and that makes it very busy. So I'll just click on it and remove all the unique enzyme side display now it looks much more cleaner this is the gene y that we want to clone in puc19 so let's open puc19 plasmid and uh, open its graphics map and again uh, here i'll uh, just remove all the unique sites which are displayed on puc19 graphics map instead we'll just visualize the restriction sites we are concerned with so we'll go to particular sites and choose eco r1 and bam h1 from the selection menu so here we go these are the eco r1 and bam h1 sites and these are what we want to use to clone gene y from plasmid tdl11 but what if gene y has an inherent bam h1 or eco r1 site that will spoil the entire strategy so first we'll have to figure out make sure that gene y doesn't have one of those enzyme sites so we'll click on plasmid tda 11 and from particular sites uh, we can choose uh, eco r1 and bam h1 which will show up wherever these enzyme sites are present within the plasmid td11 and we can't see any of them so that's a good news that means uh, gene y doesn't have eco r1 or bam h1 site and we can successfully use uh, these two enzymes uh, as its flanking region uh, and do a pcr based cloning so let's do pcr uh, in the top panel look for the box that says pcr and click on it that opens a new window and it says primer name you can feed forward primer here then the next window says oligo tail that is not identical to the target sequence and the box adjacent to it says uh, primer sequence which is identical to the target sequence so what do we mean by that if you remember how we designed gene y primers in the forward primer this portion is identical to the target sequence However, its tail that contains eco r1 site is non-identical and that's why it's dangling in air. Similarly, reverse primer, this part is identical to the target sequence while its tail that contains BAM H1 site is not identical. So let's imagine we already designed our primers, forward and reverse primer. This is the sequence of our forward primer. And this is our reverse primer. Since we thought of putting an eco R1 site as non identical tail to the forward primer, this is what we are going to attach that I wrote in red. And uh, this is the eco R1 site that would come before the actual. Uh, forward primer. Similarly, we'll put 
the damage one side before the reverse primer. So GGATCC. Now what happens is when the restriction then sits on it, it literally falls off, right? So we need to sort of pad it up. We need to give it a little bit of support. So we'll just put four extra bases here. Um, we can just randomly choose as GAGA. -A. Now when restriction enzyme sits here, it won't fall off that easily and cleave the Eco R1 or BAM H1 site. So now this is the uh, primer which is identical and this is the non-identical region to the target sequence, right? So we'll just select this non-identical region to the target sequence and um, we'll start filling up the information for forward primer and we'll just paste it here so this is the tail region or the region which is not identical to the target sequence which is gene y and for forward primer this region is what is identical to the target sequence and we'll paste it here Now is the turn for reverse primer, gene Y reverse. And GA, GA, GGA, TCC is non identical. This is the identical, right? So we'll pick up the non identical sequence or the tail region and paste it here. And let's select the identical region and paste it here. Right now we'll select the the target sequence what we are talking about is the target DNA, right? So that target DNA was uh, uh, TDL11 plasmid. This is what we want to use for our PCR amplification. Run PCR and this is probably the fastest PCR you ever did. Right, so this is the PCR amplicon what we got and let's look at the graphic map and I'll first remove all the unique sites which show up now it's much cleaner so this is the uh, uh, this is what it shows up gene y with a little bit of flanking region so let's make sure we got our eco r1 and bam h1 site which flank our PCR product so I'll go to particular site and select for eco r1 and bam h1 and here we go so we do have eco r1 and bam h1 so we did our pcr correctly we retain both these sites i mean we have successfully added our flank so now we'll save the pcr product as on our desktop and now we'll go ahead and do construction that is we want to cleave our pcr product with eco r1 band bam h1 and put it in puc19 so on the top panel look for construct box and this is what opens up and we have described it in the sub cloning video earlier but let me go through it again so we have three panels here we can select a different dna cut them and then finally ligate them together uh, but the first panel always starts with the vector fragment and in our case the vector is PUC19 so let's select that it shows up in the graphics window and since we want to cut this vector using eco R1 and BAM H1 I'll just remove all other enzymes and select for eco R1 and BAM H1 So now you can see it's in the they are in the black uh, blue panel, and uh, when you select, uh, let's say eco R1, so it will create a nick or not a nick, but it will cut it at a single position and linearize the entire plasmid, and it shows up here eco R1 on both sides, and it is linearized. To cut it with damage, when you have to first press shift. Now what happens is when you press shift and select for BAM H1, it cuts the enzyme at eco R1 and BAM H1 sites, but it selects only the teeny 
bit of the fragment between eco r1 and bam h1 side so this is where it is different than biological cutting like here you can see it's a 17 nucleotide long fragment that it has selected right and that is not what we are looking for So, uh, what we need to do here is uh, click on BAM H1 first, then press Shift and then select Eco R1. So, that will select the entire long part of the plasmid. So, this is the BAM H1, right? I mean, it cuts singly here. And now we'll press Shift and go all the way around and click on Eco R1. So, again, it has cut at Eco R1 and BAM H1, but um, the program has now selected the longer portion of the of the plasmid that which is what we want for our cloning purpose a slight bit of uh, weirdness of the softwares now we'll select the PCR amplicon that we have generated and again we'll go to particular sites and select for eco r1 and bam h1 here So I'll just click on Eco R1, press Shift, and then click on Bam H1. So now I've selected the entire PCR product, and I've cleaved it uh, at, uh, from uh, with Eco R1 and Bam H1. Never forget to press Shift, right? And now I'll simply ligate both these products, and here's my construct. So this is the text window for the construct and I'll generate a graphics map uh, for it. This is the ligation product one and this is the graphics map. This is how it looks like. So I'll remove the unique sites and I would like to compare it with PUC19 which is the parent plasmid. So this is the PUC19 text window i'll make a graphic map of that or that vector too uh, yeah for just for the comparison purpose so this is the side by side comparison so as you can see that uh, puc19 has this ampicillin resistance gene which is retained by the construct. However, the alpha portion, alpha gene is missing in uh, our construct and it is replaced by gene Y, which is an insert from our PCR product, right? And that happens because the alpha gene had uh, eco R1 and bam H1 sites in its multiple cloning site. And when we inserted gene Y, the entire sequence of alpha gene as recognized by the program has changed. So program doesn't recognize as the broken fragment of alpha gene, right? So all it says is that, okay, now you have gene Y, but alpha is totally gone out of the picture. So the other difference is the size of the plasmid that has increased in case of our construct by exactly the same measure as gene Y. Now let's confirm that gene Y has got it in um, PUC19 at the right position. So let's look for eco R1 and BAM H1 in our parent plasmid, which is PUC19, and that shows us uh, shows up in the blue boxes here, the multiple cloning site. Uh, in case of our construct, um, we'll look for eco R1 and BAM H1 site. And here you can see that eco R1 site is exactly, you know, it is retained in the construct and then we have inserted gene Y. So we got the gene Y at the right position. And we can now save our uh, construct. Save as and I'll just uh, leave the name as ligation number one. 
so you hit save and uh, now we can also uh, do some restriction digestion so you open from the top panel open virtual cut that opens this window and now select for the dna which you want to cut so in our case it will be our construct ligation number one and let's cut it with eco r1 and bam h1 that should uh, re release that should excise uh, gene y so as you can see here we have we have two fragments a large and a small one the large fragment is the puc19 backbone uh, while the small one smaller one is the gene y that we inserted in the puc19 plasmid and how can we confirm that so we can cut let's say puc19 by same enzymes bam h1 and equal one and here you can see that we have a large fragment which is puc19 backbone which is exactly the same size what we got when we digested our construct right